It's the kind of news no woman wants to hear. Being told she has breast cancer. You could see the little cancer right there. It's uh, with tentacles encompassing my breast. I was in huge denial. It happens to somebody else, not you. The statistics are chilling. About one out of every eight women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Although most common in women over 40, it can strike at any age. Kyra John was 35. I was training for a triathlon. I was strong and healthy. And then, um, you know, to find out that I was going to have to deal with this really was a surprise. I, I don't think I believed it <laughs> for a long time. It's unbelievable the number of women who have been affected by this. Once the it word got out that I'd had breast cancer, I can't believe the number of people, women who called me and said, oh yeah, I'm a survivor. Val Ogden was serving in the Washington State Legislature when she got the news. Fortunately, my cancer was caught very early. There were only a couple of cancer cells uh, in my lymph nodes, so uh, the left breast was removed. And 10 days later, I went back to Olympia and was in the legislature. And I did my chemo on the weekends. On April 12, 2000, artist and author Heidi Marble was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer and given just 18 months to live. I was told that I would not survive. There was no question about it. Everyone told me I would be gone. Instead of playing the victim, Heidi says she found the power within her to emerge as a warrior to fight the disease. She sought out the best doctors and underwent the heaviest treatments available. Heidi's strength has helped her beat the odds. At the end of the day, it came down to my passion for life and my passion for survival and my passion to raise my child. The same can be said of Cindy Horenstein. She desperately wanted to see her son, Robbie, grow up. Oh, Robbie uh, was a gift to us. Um, we didn't think we could have children, and so when he was born, I didn't think there was any child in the world who was ever going to be loved as much as he is loved. Cindy knew she might be diagnosed at some point. Both her mother and grandmother were diagnosed, and survived breast cancer. But she says nothing could prepare her for that day. I started tumbling, and what I, I call it Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. It all started happening so fast, um, and I felt so out of control. Once the shock wore off, and after enduring months of treatment, Cindy's cancer is in remission. Martha Sharman is a physician by trade, but her passion is gardening. Her road to survival has been a bumpy one. It always seems to be Murphy's Law that if the physician gets ill, either the physician herself or himself or their spouse, that many things seem to can go wrong. And I have to say, unfortunately, they did for me. Martha's side effects were severe, but being a physician, she put her trust in her doctors and medical science. I think in general today with the surgical procedures, the different chemotherapy drugs, radiation, early detection, that so many more women are surviving this that I think I don't even think about not making it. I mean, it just doesn't even occur to me. What the data shows is that we can reduce the risk of dying from breast cancer by over 30% if we do early detection. Getting an annual mammogram is one of the keys to early detection. Mammograms are like the old game of Twister when you put your shoulder on the red spot and your right arm on the blue spot and your left arm on the uh, pink spot and then your breast on another spot and you're contorted and, and, and so forth. But seriously, getting an annual mammogram is so important for all of us. Connie and her husband Lee made the lead gift that spearheaded the campaign to raise money to build Southwest Washington Medical Center's new breast care center. 
a spa-like facility designed to provide quick diagnosis and comprehensive treatment options. I can just tell you the whole design is to wrap that woman and to wrap that family in comfort and in anxiety reduction. It's a great way to honor anyone who has been through breast cancer, who will go through it. And for those like Julie Bernadovich, who have lost the fight. My wife was a daughter. She was a sister. She was a friend. She was a college roommate. She was a mother. She was a parent. She was a social worker. And my favorite of all, she was my girlfriend. Tony and Julie's kids have built a memorial for Julie in the living room. All we have left of Julie are her memories, and she promised the kids that she'd come back as hearts. And everywhere we turn, we see a heart. I'm Millie. I'm Jack. And I'm Tony. And we're asking you to support Pink Power in their quest to raise the money needed for the Breast Care Center here in Southwest Washington.